So the first thing we did is they just dropped us right out here. So we're on the broom. After we finished making our character, of course, this is where we started here. So you see the fountain over there, and then right now I'm just kind of getting a feel for how it feels to move my character around. See those little kites over there? I thought that was awesome. I love those little kites. Looks like you have, I think the red one is a lion, and then the uh, snake there for Slytherin. I'm not sure what the other one is. So then I'm kind of just talking to the gentleman in Avalanche who was helping me set this up. So uh, left on the D-pad is Revelio, And then right there, to jump on your broom, uh, you hold L1 and press circle. So that took a little bit of getting used to, having multiple buttons there. You see it kind of had a weird little clipping there as you fly through the kite. But a lot of people did mini games during this section of gameplay. I explored. And I don't know if that was a great use of my time. I'll let you guys be the judge of that after you've seen it. But I just wanted to fly around Hogwarts. So right now, I am flying around in the, I guess you would call it kind of like the slow mode. You're just sort of going around. I'm not holding down R2. So there's no speed boost there. So if you think this looks slow, a little sluggish, right there, that is when I hold R2. And so you see the wind kind of start to move a little bit faster around my character. You even hear it as well. That is when I'm holding R2 and I'm like, okay, this feels much better now. Because at first, it felt a little bit sluggish. I mean, not... It was still controlling well, but it just felt, I don't know, kind of heavy, weighty, if that makes sense. Which I think is the intent. You know, they said when they designed this, they didn't want it to feel like the very modern brooms of Harry Potter's day. You know, the Firebolt and the Nimbus and all that. So it's supposed to feel that way. However, when you hold R2... It feels much better. And so right now, I'm just, you can see me kind of spinning the camera around, dude. I was so excited to see that it was running so smoothly because uh, all the footage, at least I, I think all the footage that we had seen up until this point was probably running on like a fidelity mode on the PS5. But they were kind enough, the folks at WB were kind enough to let us switch over to the performance mode. Now, right there, that little icon, I wish I had flown down to it. I heard that some other people who got to play did, and you couldn't actually do that game anyway. Now, if you fly down right here, so I pointed this out in my preview video, but you can see them practicing. So it looks like a Slytherin and a Hufflepuff, I think, and then some Ravenclaws over there. And then I wish I'd... Oh, there's so many things I wish I had done, looking back on it now. But you guys have to understand, I mean, the way this was set up, there were certain things they wanted us to see, and they honestly, the two hours went by so quick, they didn't want us to waste our time either. So they didn't want us to basically just fly around and not get to do anything for two hours. So I understand why they kind of had certain things they wanted us to see. But instead of doing the mini games, I just go fly past the gamekeeper's hut here. And I'll tell you guys uh, a little secret here. I had been tipped off, won't mention any names, but uh, someone had tipped me off saying that there was a secret cave or cavern area that I should try to find. And so they told me a general idea of where it was near the boathouse and in between the bridge, I think is how it was described. So that is what I just go off searching for right now, which it, it kind of worked out because you guys are going to get to see some just raw, just exploring gameplay. Like, not really going for any specific mini game or any specific landmark. Just flying around the castle, which I think so many people are going to enjoy doing just that. So right there, I thought, ooh, maybe it's kind of hidden behind this waterfall back here. So I fly a little bit closer, try to take a peek. Nope, not back there. So like, okay, well, let's, let's kind of keep going around. So I start flying this way. And we're coming up on the section where... Uh, the students kind of just spawn in. So you'll get to see that here in a second, which I don't know if that will ever... Oh, was that it right there on the left? That might have been it. Maybe it's like an invisible wall or a wall that kind of disappears as you get closer to. I have no idea. But yeah, right here. So see, there's no students here. And then as I get close, they kind of just pop in right there. Uh, and you also, if you have a really good eye... I don't know why I flipped the camera around so quickly... Uh, I think I was just so anxious to try swimming that it didn't even register until after the fact that, oh, these students just popped in out of nowhere. But if you were able to pause it really quick, you could see that there was also a howler between them over there, which I think is a pretty nice touch that we're going to see howlers in the game. So swimming confirmed, as you guys already know. So I did that for just a little bit, which I have seen in other videos now 
that you can actually just jump right back on your broom from being in the water, which is really cool. And, I mean, if you think about it, what if you get stranded, I don't know, way out in the middle of the lake somewhere, and you need to very quickly get on your broom. It's really nice that they have that here. So I'm still kind of just flying around, getting used to the mechanics, still looking for that little cave. I'm thinking, okay, maybe you got to swim into it there. Nope. <laughs> nope. And then I love the music that kicks in. I love the music. Now, right here, I just take off sprinting for a little bit because I'm trying to get a feel for, okay, how does it feel to sprint as you're going between uh, the water right there and then also the rocky area. And then we're going to get kind of back over to the sand here. So it's X to jump, no surprise. And then we're going to get close to, there should be some little, uh, what are these things called up here? Leeches, I think. And at first I thought that was a snitch. If you guys go back and freeze it for a second there, I thought it was a snitch. It was actually a little dragonfly. But I was thinking, man, that would be so cool if there was just a random snitch flying around that you have to find. So I spot something right there and I thought, ooh, okay. Leech juice, collect that. And there was something over there they didn't want us to, to show. But um, you guys will get to see that in the final game. So that's why we cut that little section out. And then I go up here to just get this glorious shot of these stained glass windows right here this one of my favorite shots in the whole game i can't wait to see this at night just so beautiful i've always loved stained glass in real life as well so to get to see it right there for the first time in game of course we saw it in the screenshot before and then you see some students walking around down there and so at this point i'm like okay i don't really have enough time to do mini games or whatever let me just try to get some really awesome shots of hogwarts and then the music, dude. The music, I tell you guys, they have just absolutely nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. So I'm kind of flying toward the camera here to give you guys a nice wide shot. Oh, dude, it is just so beautiful. Now, of course, most of you all know by now, we were limited to just the Hogwarts ground. So all those mountainous areas, I would have loved to try to fly there in those directions and just see what would happen. But we had to stay on the Hogwarts grounds. Now, an interesting part is coming up here because the dev that I was working with, or who was assisting me, told me that you could land on certain places. So I don't know if they just had it turned off. You can see how it says you can't dismount in here. I don't know if there's something that was just turned off for the demo. And then here we get a different message. Landing is unavailable right now. So I am pretty sure that in the final game, you will be able to land some places. And I know Wizard PhD tried this in her video as well, and she also was not able to land anywhere. And then you'll see I'm going to try it here one more time. We go right there. Yep, see, still, you can't enter while mounted. So we got like three different explanations. So, and then speed up is unavailable right now. I think I was trying to press R2. And then we're just going to go and land in the Transfiguration Courtyard here. But I am pretty sure that in the final game, you will be able to just fly up and land in certain places. Uh, if you're not, I would be surprised. Or maybe it's like, I don't know, maybe it's something you have to unlock. So at this point, we had to go on and go inside. They were kind of leading us in there. That part of the demo was over. So now they let us in here, which this area, if you remember from the gameplay showcases, Boston Madsen described as the Grand Central Station of Hogwarts. Now, I had to go over right away and see this fountain because so many people had seen that prompt and they thought that it meant you could sit there on the fountain. And so I walked up and instead it is not sit, it is you. So you see I press square, you get this little interaction. And as that goes, you're gonna see a field guide page kind of shimmer. Then I hit Revelio and then you're able to collect. So that's the central hall fountain right there. So these field guide pages, you guys, are just gonna be super fun to collect. Super fun to collect. I mean, just in my gameplay alone, I saw several. And then watching other people's gameplay, I saw there were quite a few that I didn't even spot that were in the area. So here we're going to go over and do one of the game's side quests or small puzzle. So I'll let the characters talk for a minute here. distracted at the moment. Everyone thinks I'm utterly balmy. Samantha thinks I'm potty. But it's this painting... I never noticed it before. If I know Hogwarts, and I do, an empty frame doesn't appear for no reason. There's something more to this. And giving you guys a good look at the options there. Have you gained any insights about the painting since you've been studying it? 
I did discover that casting Lumos has an effect of some kind. But I'm not sure what to do next. If I have the time, I may look. Could be intriguing. <sighs> I've been racking my brains long enough. I hope you'll have better luck than I have. Okay, so Lumos was kind of our hint for this. And I want to talk about the void. Well, there you go. You see Lumos. And then it's going to give me a clue. I should look around and says find the location depicted in the painting. Now, you'll also notice on the mini map that it has these yellow dots kind of leading you to the area. I can't decide if I like that yet or not. I almost like it or think I would like it better. If you just had to kind of remember, but then maybe that would make it too hard. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, this obviously this one was here prepared for us. This, this is where they like wanted us to go. The painting. What could be so maybe there are going to be some more difficult Accio. ones. So I tried Accio. I thought maybe you have to Accio the moth, pick it up. But no, Lumos. it's Lumos again. Let's get you back to your and then it's going to start moth. flying around right there. And you can see I'm, I'm eyeing that other field guy page. I'm like, oh, I want to go after that one too. But you'll see me capture a couple more of those here in a second. But as far as the voice acting goes i feel like it is much improved in terms of the facial animations facial capture i do feel like it was much improved still not quite there you know not quite there i feel like it's just a little bit off but again some of that you know maybe it could be the capture as well but seeing how much it already improved i have high hopes I, I wanted to see that. Choose that just to see what would happen. Jest. She gets a little upset. I am only joking. I found the location depicted in the painting, and then I cast Lumos. The to scarf guide looks so frame. good. All very logical, I suppose. The textures on the scarf. Pity I was so close to solving it. You have a knack for solving riddles. Natty's good at that too. So is Meat, although he does tend to overexplain. Well, I'm glad someone figured it out. So, Amit, we get the correct pronunciation there. I've been saying Amit all this time. So look, I walk right up to the bench, you guys. I walked right up to it for you, and it does not appear that we are going to be able to sit. See, there's a chair too. So I'm looking all around. I'm like, is there anywhere we can sit? I walk over to that one, and I know there's, there's a fair number of people who want to know that. I personally am not that upset by it. I do not want to be sitting in this game, man. I'm going to be too busy exploring. I guess technically you can sit on your broom and you can sit on the hippogriffs, that sort of thing. Okay, so I had to go back. I wanted to get that page right there. And it's actually really fun. Really fun to go after the pages. Now that little dot you see, that shows up when you press L2. And so it's sort of like a a free look mode, I guess. And I'm so I'm, I'm kind of talking to him about that. And you're gonna see a brief loading screen right there before I go into the library. Just a very, very brief loading screen. We'll talk about that another time here this was just breathtaking walking in here so i'm kind of i'm testing this out i'm like can i use l2 to aim a little better and so that's what i was trying to do right there i would suggest not i think that l2 is really for more like a free look i don't think it's like a free aim if that makes sense it's really more for you to kind of just look around if you want to just keep your character stationary for a bit now, I was really getting annoyed by this field guide page because I couldn't find it. You see me looking all around. I'm like, it was right there. Where did it go? So as I get up here, I just decide, okay, might as well take in this gorgeous architecture. And then you can see the sun shining through on the outside over there. Got some portraits over here, which the portraits are going to be super fun. I mean, super fun to check out and see which ones are moving, if they change throughout the game. All of this, I just thought looked incredible. Just looked incredible. Sebastian took that dueling loss rather gamely. And then you get a NPC just appearing behind me. Now those two, you see that? They were in different houses, but they looked like the same character model. What I have found so interesting watching other people's gameplay is just the variety of the NPCs. Like sometimes out there in the little Grand Central Station area, I see people in Quidditch robes. And other times I see just normal students, so it seems completely randomized. So I don't know if maybe they need to kind of change up the randomization algorithm or what. I don't know. I don't know how it works exactly. But if there's any way they can try to make it so Incendio. they don't appear in the same spot. <laughs> I had to try Incendio right there. I was just curious. I really wanted to sort of try to interact with all the objects. So right there, I got Accio. 
it actually responded a little bit with that frame right there. But then you saw when I was just casting the basic shot, nothing was really reacting. So I don't think that you can just run around and blasting students. Now that little chime, did you guys hear that? I think that means there's a secret in the area. Don't know if it's a field guy. There we go. I finally spotted the field guy page completely across the library. And you can see I didn't use L2 to aim that time. I just was able to you can't imagine how inconvenient use the right stick and grab it. And I love the, the flu flames right there. The little sound you get from Ignatia Wildsmith as she uh, talks about before she invented flu powder. Which I don't think they had those turned on for this demo. Now watch right here. Brief loading screen again. So it's very possible that when you're going into a large area or a completely new section, something like that, that you will see brief loading screens. Hopefully, I mean, fingers crossed, I'd love if the day one patch makes it even better because then you can see right here, go through that door, nothing. So now we're in the Herbology Greenhouse area and the music changes. I love the subtle music change. They really did a great job. I know I'm like a broken record talking about the music, but I just think they did such a great job with it. So that right there, you can see, I think it was up on the D-pad. If you are tracking a quest, you'll see a golden trail that appears. So there we get another flu flame. And you can see why I don't think it's active, because I was standing right there, and I'm going to walk back. Yep, there I go. Walk What's back over, now? and it doesn't give me any option to interact or anything. So I don't think it was available for the demo. Level 1 lock right here. You'll get a chance a bit later to see how the Alohomora works. And then we're just kind of taking in the greenhouse area here, which looks gorgeous. I asked them, I said, so is it possible that I can find Professor Garlic down here? And they said yes, but they also told me she won't always be in here. She will either be here, sometimes she's in the Great Hall, which we didn't get to see the Great Hall. I really wish we had gotten a chance to go into the Great Hall because, man, I guess they're kind of saving that for when we actually get the game, right? Because that is going to be an epic moment going in the Great Hall for the first time. Just such an iconic area of the series. So you can see there are a few students moving around here through the Herbology Greenhouse. Not a lot, but a few students. But I was really curious about, because we were in the Greenhouse, Garlic in particular, I was trying to get at sort of what kind of routine do the characters go through. Specifically... The characters who aren't just the random NPCs, like Professor Garlic, of course, who's going to be one of the main characters in the game. I didn't see her. I was not able to find her here during my playthrough. But I did think that was cool that they talked about sometimes she could be here, sometimes she could be in the Great Hall. I think it'd be cool if they show up other places too. I mean, if she, if they had their own routines, I mean, I don't know, man. I don't know how hard that is to program in. I'm sure it's pretty difficult. Handy resource indeed. There you can see Wildsmith making another comment. But just having all, I mean, most of the time in my playthrough, I felt like the NPCs was a pretty good variety. There were only a couple times where I noticed like, ooh, that was almost the exact same person or the exact same character model. But then I saw my buddy uh, James Expecto Go's footage. He had a moment where two identical, I think they even had the same robes, were sitting directly beside each other. Now here we go back out into the central area, and I loved just listening in on these conversations as I grab another field guy page. I'm telling you, dude, it's so fun to go after those field guy pages. So you can see we got two students over on the right there, and then I'm just kind of listening in, the people sitting around the fountain here. Making a comment about Professor Hecate right there. And then I, if you saw that little transition, there was a part where I pulled up a menu, so they didn't want us to show any menus. And I love, like, see the student right there on the right, kind of, they had their wand out, like they were trying to practice a little bit. Talking about Headmaster Black, of course. Okay, right now, so when I went into the menu, and you guys weren't able to see that because we had to cut the menus out, I marked a quest. And so you can see it says, talk to Luke and Brattleby. So when I hold the D-pad up, that is what gave me this marker. And so, or I guess the really the path to that quest. And so right here, this door is where I encounter the biggest loading, which is not, it's not bad loading time, but I was just, I see, I back up. Is that supposed to happen? And then finally the doors do open up. So it's not bad, 
but I could see if that happens a lot, it might take some people out of the experience. But it's weird though, because then like this one right here, which it seems like we're about to go into another fairly large area, defense against the dark arts tower, it just opens right up. Now I wish I had thought, you see that little, I think it's a portrait on the left there. If I had tried Lumos on that, is it like another moth painting? There were so many little sounds and other things as I watched the footage back that I really wish I'd went to explore more of. But again, it was kind of a guided tour, a guided demo. So we had a little bit of free reign, but it wasn't just total free reign. So there you get a good look at the wizard statue there. And I did skip ahead a little bit because I think I stopped and was talking to the avalanche developer. I tried to break this pot. Nothing happened. And in this section right here, we're about to get a Peeves encounter. There he is. So I had to go back. Had to go back and watch this. Here I've come from the toilet bowl where she said I could swim. <laughs> Peeves is so good. As long as for the story of Eupraxia Mole. Plunge the boy's lavatory, not for the meek. Please, Peeves, you'll make me late. <laughs> the student just Peeves sounds terrified. Rancorous cop sought to trap me, confine me inside I tried to help. So if you think I'm just standing but there, I asked. I said, is there anything we can do so to interact or help? To and they said no. Arm. It was granted my privileges. Be handsome indeed. All right, fine. And then, yeah, the they saw that field guide page. So, hey, let's try a Revelio. Peeves is haunted toilets right there. Another level one lock. So I stay the whole time. There we go. I don't know why the student didn't even pick up the books. <laughs> Just leave the books right there. And then I can see the little white outline. I don't know if I like the white outline. I mean, it definitely helps you n notice and spot certain things. You see the other field guide page. It was incendio for that. But then I think on certain things that you can interact with, it doesn't show up. And then I also know there's been a lot of questions people asking about the HUD. It seems like it's going to be pretty customizable. You hear that person screaming? What in the Magic world? And, and then you got another little highlight right there, which I didn't have time. I wanted to interact with that one, but it was a different spell. I think it may have been Levioso. Which, by the way, I've had so many comments on my other video, people saying it's actually Wingardium Leviosa. I know... Or at least I think some of them are just trying to make the joke of of Hermione, right? Leviosa, not Leviosa. But actually, for this game, it is a spell called Levioso with the O at the end. It's, so it's a little bit different from Wingardium Leviosa. Levioso is purely a levitation spell, whereas Wingardium allows you to kind of move the object around. So there you go. Now, right here, before I talk to Lucan, I'm just experimenting with the spells a little bit more. I tried R1, you see a little R1 prompt right there. It did not work when I was outside of battle. So the R1 is the ancient magic throw. Circle makes you roll. Then I try Protego a little bit here so you guys can get a look at that. So if you just hold Protego, you kind of get your shield. But if you time it just right, when you get that little yellow above your head, then you can actually deflect. So you fire like a stupefy back. So we'll listen to Luke in here now. I coordinated duels for crossed ones. A dueling club of sorts. It's invitation only, so you must have really impressed Sebastian. I'm flattered to hear that. Sebastian's not a bad duelist either. Imagine it's quite something to see the two of you duel. How does cross ones work exactly? You show up, I match you with other duelists, and whoever is still standing in the end wins. It's our way of determining the school's greatest duelist once and for all. And, to liven things up, the winner is awarded a prize. Interested? Of course. Oh yeah, you know, we gotta, gotta jump in. I agree. Besides, in Cross Bonds, you can duel with a partner if you like. Your first time I'll pair you with Sebastian. Next time, you'll need to bring a partner along, or duel alone. So, care to step into the ring? Now, our character talking about dueling being ring. a pastime? That makes Let me rethink what begin. we know about the story. Like, we thought our character starts out probably not knowing we'll magic, right? Like, why else would they be a fifth year? But that comment makes me wonder, maybe they do know magic some for some reason. Somehow. Some way. Alright, so here you see break through the yellow shields with control spells. That's the yellow coloration. Like the levitation spell, Levioso. And then target with R3. 
And then, like a lot of games these days, target with R3, and then you can kind of flick it left to right to switch your targets. And so, I gotta say, I think people are gonna spend a lot of time in cross wands, or will need to spend a lot of time in cross wands to learn the combat. Because it does take a little bit of getting used to. Mainly because, here's the biggest thing. So right there, I use Levioso, but now the second that that character's shield comes back, well, it doesn't happen right here, but there will be a time when basically I'm waiting on the Levioso cooldown, but I don't have the spell even unlocked yet. So I can't even, and there you go, I, I just took a Wiganwell potion. All right, so right now they both got their shields back. So Sebastian hit them with one to break it. And I'm trying to, the dev's there, he's telling me combo possibilities. So there you go, I break it, and then get rid of that one, and then I think Sebastian finished off the other. Yeah, so maybe it's in this next section here where I didn't have the shield nice fully, uh, or Levioso, rather, didn't have it fully ahead, recharged. This up and you could be the next school champion. Brilliant. Count me in. I shall. Now, it takes time to organize these duels, but check with me later. I may have something lined up for you. Again, congratulations on your first Crossed Wands victory. Well fought. So after we finished up Hope Crossed Wands, the first round, we're going to go back over. So I'm still trying to mess with this barrel. I'm like, can I not press R1 and move that? And you can't, unless you're in battle. At least in this demo, it would not activate at all. So I go back over to talk to him again, and we're going to try out the training dummy. I did that before I did my final round of cross Hello, wands, Lucan. at least for this May demo. I use the training dummy? Of course. I'll fetch it and give you a list of combinations to practice. Ready to have a try now? Yes, let's do it. That would be wonderful. Be sure to cast all your spells before the dummy lands. If you need to stop practicing before you finish all of them, let me know. So the training dummy, I think, is going to be super helpful for teaching people the combos. So right here, you can see cast Accio, followed by four consecutive basic attacks. So it's just R2, 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 after you do the Accio, or Levioso, I'm sorry. There you go, Levioso. So you can see I sped up a little bit that time. I was asking them, I said, does it have a cadence to it? Like, do you have to do it sort of with a certain rhythm? And it seemed to work when I did it faster. <laughs> So this time I'm kind of doing it slow again. Want to make sure I get the Accio in right there. And then see, I, I sped up there and it still worked. Nicely done. So it's pretty short. Practice. I don't know how much you're going to be able to you, go back and use the I training dummy. I assume that it will be any time that you can go back and do it. You'll be a fearsome challenger now. And then I had enough time to do one more round. So I just go ahead and talk to him again right away and ask if we have the next round of Crossed Wands ready. Hello, Lucan. Is the next round of Crossed Wands all set? Why, yes it is. I've got a great match lined up. Ready for another round? I'm ready. Let's do it. Brilliant. Are you dealing with a partner? And we had the option. I should have picked Natsai. I totally should have picked Natsai. Yes. Because Sebastian. we just had Sebastian. So it. But for some reason, I just went to him again <laughs> which they don't really factor in I mean they do participate but you don't hear them talk too much at least I didn't feel like but then you get another prompt right here telling you how to break through the violet shields they require four spells to break and then again same thing with R3 same message as before on that so now we got three students that we're going against so I go Accio right away then we're hitting him with the basic shot and then I got a Protego in right there. So the jump right there, I was actually trying to dodge roll. I mentioned this in my preview as well. In God of War, it's X to dodge. But here, it is circle. So it will take me a little bit of getting used to, but it won't be a problem once I got it down. So if it looks like sometimes I'm just standing there not doing anything, I'm probably talking to the dev from Avalanche, getting some pointers on how to break the shields, do the combos. I kept trying to do the, I think what I wanted to do was Accio, basic shot, basic shot, Incendio. That's the one they were telling me about. All right, let's see if I get it right here. 
I get it here in a second. So we got the blue or the violet, I guess they're calling it. So there we go. I jump, then dodge. There's the Accio, and then the Incendio. So the Incendio is pretty short range. I think you're probably going to be able to unlock better versions of it later that go farther. At least I hope so. But what we had right here, I had to be pretty close for Incendio to work. So that was pretty cool. They were about to fall, and then I hit him with a Levioso. And then finally, I remembered, oh, I do have the Ancient Magic Throw that I can use with R1. So I finally used that, and you can see that it finished them off right there. Bravo! I gave it my all. You did indeed. The other duelists have already taken notice of you, but after that last round, they'll really have it in for you. You'd better keep practicing if you want a chance at winning, or at least surviving the next round. I'll let you know when we're ready. Hope to see you then. There you go. So when I've watched this back, all the gobstones, so I've speak. seen some comments from people talking about how it looks really dark in certain areas. I think it might have something to do with HDR. I think that they had HDR turned off. However, when I have been exporting this footage, which it's really it's high quality much. footage, told me what the it says is. HDR on my footage. So, and then even on YouTube, it I says HDR. Fine. I'm keeping an eye on her. She's safe, Poppy, I promise. Good. I'm sure but the final game will look correct on your display, you, you know, whether you have HDR or not. That some of it, it was a really, it, like, high-quality 4K I capture of the game. The head, so I just tried to preserve as much of that as I possibly could. So if you don't want to see any story stuff, we're getting into story stuff right now. This is the Poppy Sweeting mission here. It does, somewhat. But at the moment, I'm more concerned about what else you heard the poachers are up to. Fair enough. But I hope you'll let me know if I can be of help, especially after what you did for Highwing. Does the name Hauntel Hall mean anything to you? I'm afraid not. Why? What is it? The poacher's best kept secret, apparently. The name came up twice, but they never went into detail. I also overheard one of them bragging about all the gold they're making, at the expense of innocent creatures, undoubtedly. The poacher spoke of this area, and I thought if we searched around a bit, it might give us clues as to what they're doing. If you ever meet my gran, this trip never happened. Not to worry, Poppy. If I ever meet your gran, I shall not speak a word of this. I normally tell her everything. She might be my best friend after highwing, but she knows how I feel about the poachers. I think she worries I'll do something ill-advised. Whatever gave her that idea? <laughs> there you go. Poppy's showing her fierce side, which is no surprise. No surprise. Yes, I think she's going to be a very sweet character. However, however... When it comes to poachers harming magical beast, yeah. Yeah, she is not having it. So this part of the demo, the attire was, I guess, kind of randomized. So it was still my character, but like the blue gloves and the scarf and the hat, that all just appeared. And we didn't have the option to change it. Now, right there, I think that was some sort of weird glitch or bug. How my character just jerked from left to right very quickly. To Rome, yet you choose to wander here. Please, we don't want any trouble. We're simply passing through. Do you take us for fools? That we do not notice more and more of your kind around here, in league with the poachers? We aren't involved with them. If anything, we want to see them stopped. I hope for your sake that is true. Our kind is swiftly losing patience with the poachers and those they work with. All right, so another comment I've seen from a lot of people is that my character's voice sounded very robotic. He was certainly a So I actually ran out of that time in the character worse. creator. Exactly but they're on the last page. The you can adjust helping, the tone and pitch. Why would he think that we had and so I didn't really have a chance to listen to it before I, I picked. They the literally said, oh, we got to move to the next section. And so I said, oh, let me put my name in real quick. And I just basically left it exactly where it was. Now, this part was pretty pretty crazy coming up right here. So I'm going to grab the little leaping toadstool. Leaping toadstool caps. And I'm just trying to take it in right here. You can see yeah, I start walking slowly. I'm just looking around, trying to give everybody as much of a look as we could get at this little area right here. 
which just the scenery I think is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, you look at like the skybox there in the background, got snow on the ground here. And then coming up right here, the Dugwog, man, the sweet little innocent deer. That's the third time I've seen a Dugwog behave that violently. It seems that a lot of beasts have been more aggressive than usual lately. Yeah. I've noticed that too. It's almost like Appreciate the uh, gentleman at Avalanche pointing me in the right direction on that one, making sure I got the footage for that. So I tried to Accio, didn't work, which from the series, Accio doesn't work on living things. However, it can work on humans because it can violently pull like what they're wearing. So like clothing or armor, and then if they're inside, they're going to come with it. So... I, I thought it seemed kind of weird that you couldn't Accio those, but I guess by the lore, that would be correct. If the were here, Although I think it also is canon that you can apparently Accio flobber worms. <laughs> so there is some gray area there. So right here, we're kind of just investigating. So Poppy says we need to search for Revelio. signs of poachers. Revelio, guys. Revelio is going to be a... Frequently used spell they take their cages with and them? one that actually fits within the lore, right? Whereas a lot of games you see they want to give you some kind of detective mode I'm thinking Batman it kind of works for Batman Pelts. But then you have games like or the beasts. last of us where Joel can hear through walls or whatever Here it totally fits totally fits so Revelio will show Still I smoking. believe it's kind of a yellow gold for gold loot long. enemies will show up in red and then I think it's blue for quest-related items. So you see right there, I get a majestic school robe as well as 79 gold or galleons. I'm actually not sure if they have sickles and knuts in the game anymore. And yes, the pronunciation is knuts. You can look it up on Wizarding World. <laughs> I know a lot of people think the K is silent. Nope, nope, nope. Right there, get a lavender patch scarf, Revelio. do another Revelio. So I actually missed something. I go back for it there. You see me kind of skip ahead there. So yeah, the blue shows you quest related. This is goblet metal. Seems out of place in a poacher camp. I should tell Bobby. Really about large it. swords right there. So we head back over to Poppy, and then that's going to proceed us to the next part of the Anything mission here. Interesting. Poachers were here. All sorts of evidence. But I found something else. It's goblin made. I found goblin armor. Let's keep searching, but carefully. Merlin only knows what's going on here. So starting to get I don't have a good some hints that this. poachers and a group of goblins are working together. Yep, there you go. Now, I was talking to the developer right there. I'm not sure why that pops up, if that was just part of this demo, because, I mean, it really didn't seem like she was that far Look, away from me. Down there. Definitely and then I've seen some other people's footage where they try to just kind of explore so a little bit. And if you got I'd too far away from look. Poppy, that would instantly pop us. up. Should we use this so I don't know if that'll be part or of the final game or not. So you can see on the minimap all the enemies Poppy. marked right there. Let's get a better lay of the land. And here we have the option for stealth. So I opted to do that. Go with, uh, not Revelio, but the disillusionment charm. And I was also talking to the dev just about general stealth situations versus going in, you know, firing your wand like crazy. And from what they told me, it seems like the vast majority of encounters in the game are going to give you the option to kind of approach it how you want. Now you can see right here, in this scenario, the stealth is going to work out pretty well for me. In the next section, the stealth does not work out well for me at all. And another thing, another thing to point out here is they were jumping us ahead pretty far in the game. So we're at level 19. Actually, I shouldn't say pretty far. We don't know how far. We just know it was quite a jump from where we were. Because now we have all of a sudden access to eight spells. The trick is to Talus, and he just falls right off, dude. I felt so bad. So much for a good playthrough, right? You can see the little L1 and R1 prompt for ancient magic attack, but I'm going to save that here. And I didn't even know this till rewatching. If you look down there at the minimap, there looks like there's a path up to kind of the north, sort of the top left, northeast area right now, where it's positioned. Looked like there were more enemies there. 
Petrificus Totalis is square, you can see there. So it is not going to be what they call a slottable spell. Petrificus is just going to be an essential spell. So I assume you'll unlock it at some point in the game and then just always have it with you. Revelio. Yeah, there you go. Cast another Revelio so we can see the bag right there. So virtually every time I find money in this demo, it was always gold. Always gold. So that's part of the reason I'm wondering if they just decided, you know what, doing all of the currency is too much. Maybe they made it all galleons or maybe they made it all gold. We do definitely see in State of Play that they originally had them at one point. Now right here, I was kind of just testing the boundaries. I wanted to see if I would get caught, so you can see I do get caught. They come rushing over. However, it doesn't look like they spot me. They're looking around. You can see they're confused, and I'm like, okay, you know what? Ancient magic time. Blast them with the lightning. Now, what I found out about this is apparently if I had used the ancient magic throw, I could have blown up the bridge with that barrel. There was a red barrel sitting basically right where I'm standing right now, but it fell off when I did the lightning attack. However, I've since watched some other people's footage, and if you destroy that bridge, you can rebuild it with Reparo, which I think is so cool. So cool. So in mine, bridge wasn't destroyed at all. So I didn't even have any need for it. Never, never saw it. Cast Rebellio quite a bit here because there's a lot of loot in this area. And again, if you're with me so far, our biggest spoiler is probably coming up, at least as the story goes. I mean, it's not, I don't think it's a huge story spoiler, but if you don't want to know anything about any of the side story, or no, this is a main story, I guess, a main mission. Yeah, here we go. What in my, my jaw dropped. My jaw dropped at this part. Could not believe it. So they're taking a page out of the book of Goblet of Fire, right? Where Ron's family had the tent. Remember when they go to the Quidditch World Cup and Harry couldn't believe? You walk into the tent and it was just huge. All these rooms. So it looks like a small tent. We go in. It's a dragon and, yep, fighting. that's right, Poppy. Dragon fighting ring. This is Hauntel Hall. The name makes sense now. And the secrecy. No wonder the poachers were in Hogsmeade so much. Likely taking bets and spreading the word. Given how crowded it is here, how could they possibly enjoy this? The centaurs have every right to be disgusted with wizard kind. There must yep, be more she's getting mad in. now. The poachers are far too getting greedy upset to run a fighting now. ring with only two dragons. We should take advantage of most eyes being in the fight and look around. But be discreet. You especially can't afford to be spotted. It's like, how do we get out of Hogwarts right now? That's a brilliant idea. <laughs> you especially can't afford to be spotted. Now, speaking of Canuts and Galleons, look at that. Look at that on the sign. I paused and looked at it. So they do still show them in game. He was about to detect me. I know you're there, but I quickly hit Petrificus. Got rid of him. And so Revelio is going to be very, very helpful when you're trying to just go through stealth. So that's what I'm doing Revelio. right now. Is there anything around here? Anything I need to collect? Don't see anything. And then we're going to have a couple of enemies down here. Have you heard from your family? Is even your the loyalist to warriors over there. So we got Joyous. two goblins on our left. And then far. a human over the on the right. I say. And then I told the dev, because he was saying, if you want, you can just sneak by them. You don't have to engage. And I said, of course, though, you're going to put that chest right there. You're going to put the chest right there to entice us. So I'm trying to think, okay, how can I go about this as quietly as possible? So I decide to go over and take out this wizard first. Because he's a little bit separated from the others. So we're going to do... He almost caught us, too. He was just turning around. Hit him with Petrificus. And then I'm going to... And look, I did... You see him vanish away right there? So the enemies do not stick around the bodies. And then we're going to hit him with a Petrificus. And then I just say, you know what? Let's go ahead and do an Ancient Magic. And it is the one that just absolutely obliterates him. Obliterates him. He's just gone. Just ripped apart. Lavender patch scarf right there. So, was it worth it? I don't know. I guess if you like lavender and scarves, <laughs> it was worth it. So, I'm casting Revelio, looking around. I see those guys, but I don't think they're in the area I'm at right now. Now, also note, look above. 
Look above. You can even see those little golden ones for the next uh, loot. And I tried to get a little bit of a view of the dragons right there for you. Looks like a common Welsh green. And I think a Hungarian horntail was the other one. Bravadio. Then you got some creatures right there. Which, by the way, you guys are new here, man. We predicted the poacher thing so far in advance. That's one thing I nailed. There's been some things we got wrong, some we got right. That is one we got right long, long ago. There was actually a frame, of, a, an individual frame of the first trailer of this scene right here. This scene right here. And if you stopped it at just the right frame, you could actually see that the dragon was chained. Let's even hold, shall we? So Poppy sees him down here, says, nah, we're not having this. We're gonna we're gonna get this dragon free. And this is the Hybridian Black Dragon, the dragon that has been featured throughout the promotional materials. I think that was really why this was such a cool reveal. They've got a dragon egg. Seeing that there are other dragons in the game, right, dude? It's not just the Hybridian Black. And it's because they have him captured here. In fact, that's part of one of the things that helped me formulate my theory of, of poachers. And that they were somewhere near Hogwarts because we saw, or saw evidence at least, of creatures that weren't native to the area. Alright, now here we get to one of the more interesting parts of the demo, at least in terms of how people felt about this minigame. So, you saw a little cut right there because I skipped ahead. It took me about a full minute to actually get this. And I even had someone there explaining it to me. So you have your left stick and your right stick. And you want to take the left stick and just keep moving it around. That controls the green one until the bottom right starts spinning. And then you want to spin the right one, or the red one, I'm sorry, with your right stick until the center starts spinning. I'm hoping it will get better with practice. Right, and maybe I they could the even egg. tweak the directions or something the or we'll only buy us increase the... Let's make that I don't really know how to word it because I'm not a game dev, but it feels like right now you have to be way too precise and there's it just it just takes a little bit to get it. Now, it could also be one of those things that the more you do, then you're just going to it's going to come second nature. So hopefully that's what it is. Now, this area I'm kind of trying to decide, okay, how do I want to go about this? Obviously, we want to try to start off with some stealth. Maybe we can take out an enemy or two without even being detected. So I go disillusionment and I'm just kind of scanning the area. I don't know why I didn't think to cast Revelio right here. But I'm just looking all around. You can see we got enemies up top. And then we've got more dragons right there. More dragons locked away. And after playing this, man, I hope there's another scene where we can go back and like set them all free. Wouldn't that be awesome? So I'm looking around, looking at all that I have to work with. And I decide, you know what? I'm going to see if there's any way I can climb up. Because my thought was, let's get the guys up top first, because they kind of have that bird's eye view. But then, nope. I think I just got too close and that guy heard me. And at this point, the battle is officially on. And this was the most intense part of the demo by far. Right there, you can see I got Protego. Got Protego on him. So the little green X's, those of course represent the cursed status effect. And so when I hit that second goblin with Crucio, they basically start sharing damage as long as they have that green X. But now the green X is gone. You can see I get a little up close Protego right there. So it even works on the melee attacks. Now right there, oh yeah, I got that one there too. There's one coming up that I just totally miss. Now the little button that you have to press whenever you get suspended like I just did right there, Okay, that's an ancient magic, L1 and R1, to do that little slam right there. But whenever you get... Oh, there's the one. There's the one that I didn't block. It does major damage, and I have to heal right away. So we do have Poppy here helping us out, fortunately. But yeah, the button changes. So right there, that time it was circle. Sometimes it's square. Sometimes it's triangle. Sometimes it's X. So that, that will keep you on your toes as well. So we Accio this one right here. Ooh, that was, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Basic shot, the roll, and then a Confringo. But Protego's gonna be your best friend. 
Protego, and honestly, this Ancient Magic throw with R1. I should have used that a lot more. But part of the reason I didn't, I mean, I was aware it was there, but I really wanted to try and learn the combos. And this was one of the coolest moments, dude. The Poacher Animagus. And I wish, I don't know why I didn't keep the camera on the Animagus. I wanted to see the transition, or the transformation, rather. And then you can see the battle is really going to ramp up right now because we've got the wolf out. And then we have even more poachers, even more goblins. And the wolf just starts attacking me from behind. I took a lot of hits right there. Had to use a Wigan Weld. And so I'm just trying to put some distance between me. And then I get tired of the wolf. I'm like, okay, I've had it with the wolf. I've had it with the wolf. Crucio on the wolf, which you can see just... Totally takes the wolf out of the battle for a bit. But then, right there, do you see that? They transform back into the human form. So Crucio did not completely finish them off, and it eventually wore off. There we go. Accio, Confringo. And then right there, I'm like, okay, we gotta get rid of this Animagus once and for all. Do the ancient magic attack there. And if I haven't mentioned it yet, the red, you have to roll. You have to roll. Protego will not work on the red, so that's why you can see me every time now. I'm just starting to roll. So this is where I started to feel pretty good. I was thinking, okay, this is going a lot better. Even get that Protego right there. Ancient Magic Throw right there. As you can see, does quite a bit of damage. And then I just get a little bit too close. I can't hit this Goblin up here because he's just... Yeah, right there, you can see it's just hitting the little wood in front of him. So then I back up. There you can see Poppy's plant is doing work right now. And I love this. I love this right here. Watch the line. Is this what they teach in herbology these days? They don't even get to finish the line before the plant finishes them off. Those are the kinds of things that I did not pick up on in the heat of the moment. But then going back and watching it now, it's so funny. A lot of the comments that you see from the characters you're battling are pretty humorous at times. All right, this cutscene's really cool. It's pretty cool. I suppose we'll find out. And then all of a sudden, they just start apparating in even more of them. So I'm assuming these are from above. They hear what's going on, so they start coming down. I was, I've been wondering, as I've watched this footage, what is that box over there that's just hovering? You see the little violet around it? I don't know if that's a puzzle or what. These wizards start attacking. I don't know why we just stand there and why they didn't think to Protego, but hey. <laughs> we made it out. We made it out. And then we get to see, oh man. I was wondering, I was like, is this dragon going to attack us now? Are we going to have to battle this dragon? But no, quick thinking by our character. Hey, let's just give the dragon a way out. Just give the dragon a way out. We'll back up. And hopefully we're all good. But hopefully the dragon will remember us and our kindness. This and we gotta get out of here. But I wanna know, like, what happened to the other dragons, right? Like, was it cut for the demo? Are there certain things they didn't show us that will actually happen? Or will we go back later and save the other animals? I don't know. That was a Hebridean black. I'm guessing the egg we have belongs to that dragon. And they have a couple more I don't lines think she here. She knew they had her egg. She wouldn't have left without it. What now? She didn't exactly leave us a calling card. I I don't know. Nothing about this day was expected. Not the goblins, and definitely not the fighting ring. The last thing I planned on was a dragon egg, and the poachers saw us, which cannot be good. Since the dragon we freed flew off. Does that mean we a lot get of people are wanting to know I'd about that egg. A lot of coaches, people are wanting to know. Now, do we take it we to the room of requirement? It'll be hard, we hard already know like you can nurture beasts the there. Long. We aren't helping ourselves standing here. Let's get to now, everything you guys just watched, if you want to see that without right. any commentary Does whatsoever, check out the video on the right side of your screen now. Plenty right now, more Hogwarts it. Legacy content coming your way as we head Be up careful, to launch. As always, thank you so much for watching. Castle. I'll talk to you again soon.